Hi guys, this is Astrid Mueller again, web designer and brand designer, and I'm passionate about helping fashion startups and women entrepreneurs succeed. I've got somebody super exciting here with me today in a Skype interview for you guys. It's Tosha Clemens, and she's PR expert. She's super um, in, uh, immersed in the fashion industry. She has a really exciting background. She modeled she worked for Ford nonetheless. She was a singer. It's like in the entertainment industry now she's like uh, she has her own PR agency where she works with fashion insiders big brands she worked with brands like Bebe, Sue Wong, Fox whatnot she got some brands big she speaks at industry insider events goes covers New York Fashion Week and all kinds of stuff welcome I'm so excited to have you today <laughs> Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. So can you tell our listeners a little bit more, like briefly, your background, like what's your focus and what's your talent? How can you help fashion startups and women entrepreneurs if they will come to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, I started out in PR actually by an accident. Uh -huh. I started helping startup companies in product development and manufacturing and as the years went by, I just started noticing that startup companies were really wanting and asking me for PR services. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, you know, that is a, is a topic that really is useful. You could have a great product, but at the end of the day, if you don't get it out there, then what's the point? Yeah. So I really started kind of fine-tuning, you know, what I was doing, learning more about PR, starting to offer different services to help those brands get their name out um, on different platforms. So it kind of wasn't planned, but um, it's been great over the years to now offer those services, and I've learned a lot, and it's been a great journey so far. So uh, one of the topics that I speak about when I travel is DIY PR mm -hmm. and really helping those companies that are starting out, they can't afford to hire a PR agency because yeah. their monthly fees are pretty expensive. Yeah. Helping those um, be able to do little things on their end to start the process. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to have you for this specific purpose because I'm in those shoes as well with my own jewelry line. And you know, it just, I know it's like really hard to afford. Um, PR at the beginning, you just can't do it yet. So it's so awesome to have you here and talk with you about this. And I'm going to pick your brain <laughs> on how okay. to do this. So um, before we dive into the, the nitty gritty, that like, can you tell me a little bit that um, I know you're passionate startups and helping them succeed, but you said there's um, some startups have better chances. And you mentioned something you're going, you prefer to work with startups who have a special kind of brand twist. Can you say a little bit more about that? What it takes to, to have good PR chances? Yeah, and that's something that I really do talk a lot about with companies is it's going to help your chances um, be more successful on the PR side if you have a certain niche or you have an element about your company that stands out. Like one of the uh, companies that I work with now um, is called Stellari. Mm -hmm. They're a startup yoga wear company that's been around a couple of years. She's based in Phoenix, Arizona. And, you know, we started working together and really trying to make yoga wear be a lifestyle brand and be versatile. So the great thing about her is all of her clothing is eco-friendly. It's actually made out of water bottle material mm -hmm. or uh, plastic water bottles yep. and that's melted down into material now. So on the PR side, we're able to use that as a really cool way to pitch her company. And it's great because it's versatile because we can go in so many different directions. Yep. And it's been amazing the press that she's been able to generate in such a short period of time because mm -hmm. she really stands out in, an, in a unique way. Yes. I love it, and I love to your example here um, to show like how branding, how important it is. It's one of the moments where you really realize if you have a unique brand, then you can succeed so much better in everything. And press is one of the fields, obviously, where that really helps. Um, and right. you guys who are watching, if you're not on my newsletter list yet, go sign up because I have a free branding crash course for download as a thank you um, that can help you kind of solidify the uniqueness of your brand before you reach out 
to anybody and then you have the much better chances to succeed so that's just a quick side note <laughs> but it is super important very cool so so let's zoom in a little bit on what people can do as a startup and small business owners um, on their own if they really cannot afford you yet and not get personalized services how do they how do you start like what do you recommend for people to to, to do first to get press well, it's really important not to dive in too quickly. Mm -hmm. Like you want to make sure that you are ready to start yeah. going after PR. Right. Regardless if you're the one doing it yourself or you're hiring someone to do it for you, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're fully ready. And some things that you can uh, jot down to make sure is uh, a website. You want to make sure that your website is ready. Uh, you want to have high resolution photos. Uh, lifestyle photos are great. That's what we usually use on the PR side when we're pitching. You want to have product shots, you know, with a white background, but then mm -hmm. also have lifestyle shots that are showcased with the model that really tell the story about what your company represents. So visually, when an editor at a magazine sees those images, they can connect the dots really easy and mm -hmm. say, okay, I understand where this direction is going. Like going back to the Stellari example, with her photos, all of her imagery is really kind of focused on a boho chic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to that eco-friendly, really painting the story that, you know, this girl is earthy, she's boho, she loves the environment. You want to tell your complete story through images. So mm -hmm. For PR, images are like the most valuable, important thing that you can have. So if you are going to invest money into your company, I would say it's very important to make sure that your images are professional and they're high resolution. You don't have to spend a ton of money doing this. There's different resources you can use. Yeah. Um, Model Mayhem is a great one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can do some research, find some photographers that are you know, aligned with your company, but you want to put a lot of attention toward your photography. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that all of your, um, you know, step-by-step -step processes are in order first before you start going after yep. PR outlets. And yep. then, you know, really working with bloggers, starting out with bloggers is a great way to kind of showcase um, your name, get it out there, mm -hmm. and then that will look appealing to editors that they can see that bloggers are really taking initiative to what you're doing and mm -hmm. it's creating a buzz. So right. we always say, you know, start with bloggers first, get the name out there, get people talking about you, mm -hmm. have bloggers review your products, mm -hmm. and then editors are going to get more excited about it. That sounds really great, and I love that kind of. Um, tapering back a little bit before people go out and like, think about themselves first make sure you're ready I just read a book to um, the the girl boss book by Sophia Maruso from Nasty Girl. Yeah. I remember her oh, okay. she actually yeah she actually th didn't do any press until her business was really already running uh, and really right. going very well and she started having sales and I thought that was a really cool inspiration too because I guess then you can kind of make sure that he that things are just working, <laughs> you know, like you have yeah. your sales test that you're ready to mm -hmm. to accept more sales when press does come in. Because I guess I've heard of examples too um, where where people do get press and then suddenly they can't keep up, and then you have this buzz and you kind of just like implode <laughs> because you can't handle it. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought it was a great example to not just go for, oh, think big and go right now, but just kind of grow organically a little bit and just make sure the foundation is great. And uh, yeah, love your example with the bloggers. Just start small. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Really awesome. What you want to do is grow too quickly. Yeah. People are going to remember that. Yeah. And especially editors are going to get frustrated that you can't deliver yeah. when you say you can. Um, and they're going to get frustrated and not want to work with you again. Yeah, so exactly. it's okay to go slow. I actually encourage it, yeah. you know, so then that way you're taking the right steps to get to where you want to go yeah. the best way. Yeah, yeah, like take like little little challenges and grow from there whenever some, something works, right? Yeah, that sounds really awesome. <laughs> Very cool. So um, one thing uh, that, um, so let's just go it down to the really nitty gritty, like let's say somebody is ready. Um, and they, they have sales and they have good images and whatnot. And um, what do they start with first? Like, what's the first thing you would do task-wise? <laughs> do you do, like, a media yeah, list so or what? 
Yeah, so definitely once you've generated some buzz with the bloggers, then you want to kind of take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you're showcasing any press that you get on your website. So mm -hmm. I would say, you know, first step is obviously trying to find like five or six different bloggers that you can work with, mm -hmm. have them post on their site. Then you take a screenshot of that or a tear sheet or whatever and put that on your website. Create a press page. Yep. It doesn't have to be, you know, from a large magazine. You just want to showcase that you are starting to create that buzz. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to start to build off that. So mm -hmm. once you have some bloggers that have talked about you and you've updated your website to reflect that, then you want to start going after local press. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, let's say you're in California, um, you want to find and research different like websites and online magazines mm -hmm. that are in that area because your chances of getting published on the smaller scale is a lot higher than yeah. on the national scale. Yeah. So you want to still continue to take those baby steps. So you're at that stage where you're ready for local press. So you would reach out and find editors at local magazines, mm -hmm. local websites, mm -hmm. Send them um, a press release on your company. So a press release is really important because okay. it gives you an overall quick shot of what your brand represents. Uh -huh. And you can actually show a link to your website or a link to your press page of what press you've generated so far. And then we usually say if you're interested in featuring the company, high resolution photos are available. Mm -hmm. We don't just send those out. Okay. Um, on our own at the beginning because yeah. you want them to contact you and tell you that they're interested in featuring you because if you send them everything at the beginning they might feature you and and you won't even know when they do it oh my gosh that's a good tip yeah we've had that happen before and it's like well you want to still be able to track everything and google alerts is great to be alerted when something goes up about your company on mm -hmm. google but if it's in a digital magazine, there's no way to track that. Yeah. So you could be getting press and then you don't even know that it's happening. Yeah. So you don't want to give an editor all the information mm -hmm. at the very beginning. You want them to reply to you and start that conversation yeah. and that relationship. And then you're alerted, okay, they're wanting to feature me. I'm going to send them the high resolution photos. And then you can see when they're actually going to feature you. That's so true. that definitely is the next step is fo focus on local press first. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So um, let's backtrack just a little bit for the very first day when you sit in front of your computer and you're, you're trying to get press and like you don't know how to get started and you're just like, okay, I can Google people, but where do you start and how do you, what's the fastest and best way to find it? So um, I've heard people say they start like an Excel sheet. It's like a simple, I guess they call that media list. Is that right? Where you just have like the names and you start, like maybe you start with bloggers and then you look for specific ones that are good for your brand. And like, is, is that how, how would you recommend to go, um, go about that? Um, you do that. Where do you research people? Just like, um, do you just Google them or is there are there good platforms in the fashion industry to find them or? Yeah, you definitely want to make sure when you're doing your research that you find the exact person's information that you need. Yeah. A lot of mistakes people will make is they'll go to that website online and they'll get the customer service email and email that email address. Oh goodness. Okay. And that's not going to get you to the right person right. and unless that customer uh, service person forwards your email yeah. over to the editor, it's never going to get there. Yeah. So you want to um, really find out which magazines are a perfect fit for your company mm -hmm. or website. Start there. Like if you are um, a yoga wear brand, I keep going back to that example because okay. it's Great. easy to reference. If you're a yoga wear brand, then you're going to focus on yoga magazines, health magazines, mm -hmm. lifestyle and fitness. Yeah organic magazines, mm -hmm. all these different angles that are going to tie back to what your company represents. And then you're going to search for those editors that write for that magazine. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is a really good resource. So good like, if you're on um, the magazine's website, you're going to actually read some of the articles and see who the editors are. Nice. Like always see when you're on an online magazine, mm -hmm. 
you'll see who wrote that article. Yes. And so you'll want to find that journalist or that editor's information and email them directly. So yes. LinkedIn is a great resource for that. That's such a great tip. And um, do you have a tip on how to reach out to those people? Like what's the um, politically correct or most liked way um, for editors to be approached? The subject line is definitely the most important because that's what's going to grab their attention to mm -hmm. even open up your email. So the percentage of them opening up is very small. So yeah. you want to really capture their attention from the subject line. Mm -hmm. So make it short and sweet but direct. So, you know, for the yoga wear line, we'll say eco friendly, made in the USA mm -hmm. yoga wear line. Like mm -hmm. something to really grab their attention right. or you know, a launching new collection, if it's made in the USA, anything that's going to really help your chances of getting it out there. And whatever that editor writes about, you know, include that in the subject line so it's enticing for them because they're going to be looking for stories anyways. That's what they yep. do. Yep. So you want it to tie that kind of with what they already talk about yeah and, and make your email kind of short and sweet you don't want it to go on super long you yeah. know they're in a hurry they get tons of emails every day yeah. so really get to the point pretty quickly and if you can show an image that's great and always include your website in there and then let them know how resolutions are available upon request Sounds great. Really cool. Um, so do you have a tip for people? Um, I know that the, finding the contact is one thing, but like finding the actual email address is not always possible. So let's say you don't find it and you need to reach out via LinkedIn. You know, how it's like if you're not a professional member, you can only, or like the first contact is always, you just have like one really short thing. <laughs> can you even do it with LinkedIn? Like you're just like, hey, let's connect, or I have this sign. How do you do it if you have to do it in LinkedIn? Is that... Well, the great thing about LinkedIn is it'll tell you who else is working for that company. Okay. Like a lot of times what will happen if, let's say I'm trying to connect with an editor at Seventeen Magazine mm -hmm. and I am unable to find her direct email address, but I find five other people on LinkedIn that also work for Seventeen, mm -hmm. and I happen to connect with one of those. Mm -hmm. Once I get that one person's information, and if their email address that's associated with their LinkedIn account is their business email, then that will let you know their format of their yeah. email. I love it. Nice, sneaky, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so that's kind of like an industry secret, like. Every company's email accounts are structured the same. So yeah. let's say, you know, if it is Seventeen Magazine, it might be the first person's name dot an initial of their last name yeah. at Seventeen.com yeah. or whatever the structure is. But once you can find one person's email address from that company, then all you need is that other person's name and you can fill in the dots of how to structure the email. That's really awesome. They're very good too. Love it. <laughs> um, so um, here's an, another question I have. Like, um, because I was active in the wedding industry for a little bit, and I was doing blogger collaborations there. And I know there were some platforms that I used and worked for me to get press in the wedding industry, where um, you can kind of sign on, and I think you paid like a monthly membership or something, and you pitched, um, you uploaded a, shoot, a photo shoot, let's say, and then you were able to to select certain publications and bloggers and whatnot, and just pitch to them by clicking, and it's like tick 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 tick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, very effective. Um, is that something that exists in the fashion industry or something you recommend? And how does that differ from when people come to you and your service? So what's, what's the pros and cons here? <laughs> right. Um, if you're doing it yourself, you know, as a startup, then time is of the essence, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to want to try to find platforms that's going to streamline the process for you, make it easier. So something like that, I would definitely recommend uh, finding different resources that you can already kind of log on to their platform and select different bloggers that you can reach out to really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I, on my end, don't use that. It's not necessarily that it's a bad thing or right or wrong. It's just we kind of approach it in a different way that we kind of make it more personable. Mm -hmm. We reach out based on a direct fit that we feel like is perfect for our client yeah. and we see really good results and positive feedback from that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but that is a lot more time. Um, it's a lot more, you know, timely. So it just depends on really what you're allotting your timeline to be for pitching PR and then what process is going to work for you. That sounds good. Okay, cool. So, um, let's say we do have some press from, from some different magazines. Is there, what's the policy on like, um, like, is there a policy on staying in touch, like a specific sequence that you wait until you reach out again? Or like, how, how should startups do that if they don't have a press agency handling that? Because I know you guys build relationships and, and what's, yeah, what's the way that, that they should do it um, with uh, limited resources? What do you recommend there? Definitely don't reach out too much. Yeah, right? <laughs> you don't want to burn that bridge. Um, you know, the biggest thing, if you're thinking about it from the angle of an editor, um, if you're getting tons of emails from the same person, you're going to get really annoyed and yeah. you're just going to not want to work with them. Yeah. So you want to reach out initially as like an introduction to see if they're interested. Nine times out of ten, you won't hear back. And that doesn't mean that it's a no. It just means that it could be not right now. Yeah. Because... Editors, you got to think about it from their perspective. They're so fixated on whatever current issue they're working oh, on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they already know what their theme is for that month or what angle they're going to be taking it in. And if you send them an email at the right time and it fits in with what they're working on, they'll jump on it. But if not, then they're not even going to really be thinking about that. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that they don't like what you have to offer. It just means that it's not the right time. So mm -hmm. it's definitely important to send follow-ups. And actually, the majority of the coverage that we get for our clients has resulted in a follow-up. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, you send your initial uh, introduction out. Wait like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Send follow-up email just to touch base. Mm -hmm. you don't hear from them again. You know, wait a couple months. and. Yeah send it out to them again and it'll be at a different time they'll be focusing on a different subject and who knows so um if you followed up like three times and you're not seeing any reaction you know follow up maybe six months later when your second collection comes yeah. out yeah okay that's really great cool so um let's talk about what is interesting for editors because i know you can pitch all kinds of things like some people just want to pitch if they start a new company or a new brand and like um sometimes you may have a really cool photo shoot or you may have product or a cool story brand story like so how do you what are all the options like as inspiration so the startups can think about what they can use to pitch um can you give some examples yeah, definitely. Uh, you want to get creative with your pitches. You want to give editors some ideas of topics that they can talk about. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if your designs or your company has unique elements that can be used in different ways, mm -hmm. you want to play off that. You want to create different ideas for the editors. Um, you know, like if it is eco-friendly, then talk about different ways that it's eco-friendly. Um, if it's an accessory company, talk about different ways that you can style it. Right. Um, you know, create different topics like you w normally would if you had a blog mm -hmm. and you were going to be pitching your uh, company on your blog and creating different little stories for your blog. Kind of approach it the same way, but maybe not as lengthy. You just want to create like a topic and then um, basically give them different ideas. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, you're saying that the first um, contact is really short. So does that mean you have to be ready to have a longer text for them for more information if they um, do like the idea or do they write everything themselves? How does that work? Um, well, it works both ways. Like sometimes we'll provide them with information that's pretty lengthy, a couple paragraphs describing the company in more detail. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll want to use that as is or take that and elaborate on it or take that and rewrite it. Mm -hmm. um, or they just like the company and they have their own idea of how yeah. they would want to work it into whatever feature they have. So there's so many different ways of doing it. but. The initial, um, the initial introduction, you kind of want to make that short and sweet and mm -hmm. just talk about an overall 
uh, vision for the company, what it stands for, mm -hmm. not necessarily um, diving into an elaborate pitch, but you mm -hmm. can like highlight different ways that you could see it being featured as like yeah. topic points, but yeah. nothing elaborate. Does that okay. make sense? Yes, it makes sense. And I guess it would be good to have like um, whatever information you're using as teaser to really have it ready to kind of send it out. Like uh, let's say um, with your yoga example and the unique production or methods of materials and whatnot. So you would have like a blurb that really bullet points it or gives them like really fast um, reviewing options so they can write an article, right? Right. Okay. Okay. That sounds amazing. Awesome. Let's do an example from um, where I've been in those shoes as well. <laughs> so um, I've done a lot of collaborations um, with my jewelry line and um, where, which by the way, I think it's a great way of getting great photos, right? Just find like other um, professionals like photographers and models, whatever, who want to build their portfolio. And if you find really talented people, then you don't have to pay at all. Like this is actually my strategy as a startup, just to like, really think collaborative minded. So um. Let's say a bunch of times I had it um, where we did have great photos and um, uh, we're all kind of new, you know, a photographer would, is all dreaming about getting featured in Vogue, <laughs> of course, <laughs> and all those things. But like um, what is realistic and how do you go about um, really approaching high, high quality editors? Like what, what's your stance on that for startups? <laughs> Uh, like you mean like someone at a, like a large magazine? Yeah, like for instance, uh, like um, you know, Vogue Gioielli in, in, in Italy or something. <laughs> you know, like if you oh, I have this unique jewelry line. Is that even realistic? And and um, how would that follow the same principles? Or is it kind of like you said, you should start small, and they will not even look at anybody if you haven't featured been featured in blogs. Um, it's not to say that it's not going to happen. Um, but I think starting small is going to set yourself up for the most success. Yeah. Uh, one element that we haven't talked about that's really important is social media too. So like I would say the step-by-step -step process should be blogs first, yeah. local press second, mm -hmm. then really starting to generate a buzz on social media, mm -hmm. like finding strategic Instagram people to do pictures uh, with your product. No. So then that way you have a collection of different images mm -hmm. that you can also use. Of course, they're not going to be super high resolution, but it's going to be a way that you're continually out there and you can show to the press, you know, here's who all has been wearing the product. Oh, Here are great. the full images. So you can keep making your images be fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and once you really kind of saturated the market with social media you've got some local press you've got maybe some like online magazine press you know then you would want to put together a press kit mm -hmm. uh, press kit is really important for a company to have because it will kind of um, tell your story as well as show the press that you've been in so then that way you can submit that to larger magazines right. in hopes that an editor will um, be interested in it but uh, on the social media side, you know, anyone that you can get that has a large following or mm -hmm. that has a social presence that's pretty profound, a lot of the big magazines are looking to social media yeah. as a way to kind of validate a company and a brand before they would feature it. Oh, good point. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like, a, you know, the celebrity approach. If they see a celebrity wearing a new company, then they'll be like, oh, I want to see what clothing line that is. And then they'll be interested in featuring it. So you don't have to go after a really big celebrity. Now with social media, you can really find strategic people that have large following mm -hmm. and, and use them as your celebrity brand ambassador. Nice. That's really neat. I have a question for that, too. So <laughs> I, had, I was lucky that through people I met on Instagram, I was able to um, get one of my jewelry rings uh, worn by Miss Universe at the time. <laughs> and I got a picture on Instagram and Twitter kind of went crazy for a moment, <laughs> which is really funny. Like, uh, But my question here is like, if that happens and you get a celebrity to wear it, like, how do you make the most um, out of this opportunity? Where do you take it from there? Do you jump on it right away and like as while it's still visible and then you pitch to magazines or what do you do? Yes, definitely. You want to um, capture as much press from that moment as possible and really okay. build upon that. So 
you know, if somebody posts like Miss Universe today uh, wearing your jewelry, then you obviously want to repost. You want to put that in your newsletter. You want to add it to your press page on your website. Yeah. You want to build a whole press um, pitch around it mm -hmm. and send it out to the media. So then that way they can see it. And a lot of times they're going to take you more seriously mm -hmm. because someone um, famous has, has wore yeah. your jewelry, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, that's really good to know, and I totally missed out on that opportunity. <laughs> and then also use that as a way to go after other celebrities yeah, as well, right? You know, and and pitch to other social media people and send them products and hope that they'll do the same as Miss Universe. You know, so you're kind of building on that platform yeah. and keeping the momentum going. Nice. Okay. Very cool. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, let's say, like, back to the hypothetical crazy big dream example of Vogue. <laughs> um, let's say you have a really cool team and you have a, um, a photographer who's just amazingly talented and you create this um, this photo shoot and you're just part of, uh, which is really awesome. Like, um, But the photographer doesn't have any experience in pitching. Like, would there be a chance that, um, let's say, creative magazines or art, art focused magazines or, you know, just like high caliber magazines that look for great photos that they may be interested even if you're a no-namer um what is what are your stance is your stance here um and this obviously will bring up a good point too about photographers um when you're looking to work with a photographer you make sure make sure that you can have access to use all those images yes we've ran into issues in the past where we've hired a photographer and They've been very strict about releasing their images to oh. certain outlets. Oh my gosh. So if we're pitching to a magazine and the photographer doesn't give us the release for it, mm -hmm. then it's not going to be able to be ended up in the magazine. So you want to have full rights to your images. Yeah. But if you're doing a collaboration with a photographer and you're going to be like in an editorial shoot, mm -hmm. like jewelry is a perfect example. Like if a stylist and a photographer already has this photo shoot planned, and they're just needing um, accessories uh, for their photo shoot, then you're a part of that collaboration. So up front, you would want to kind of talk about what's expected and if you're allowed to use those images, mm -hmm. what the purpose of the shoot is for. You know, if it's for a, a magazine, then they might have exclusive rights to the images. Mm -hmm. um, if it's just a photo shoot that you all three are putting together to see what could happen, you know, that's great because then the three of you individually could be pitching it to different outlets. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some magazines or websites online will have a submission button yeah. and you can submit your editorial shoot strictly through that. Very cool. So, um, Okay, you just brought up a very important point too about um, which I had in the wedding industry. There was some policy where um, most bloggers and outlets were saying that okay, we only accept exclusive submissions, and and so so what's the thing there in the fashion industry and in the professional PR industry? Like, how long do you have to wait until you submit to another outlet or another blogger, or do you have to look individually what their policy is? And like, because you want to optim, you want to move fast right I mean you don't want to sit on your photos for too long and wait too long so how do you handle that to really maximize your efforts and your time yeah I mean unfortunately every magazine and every website is different yeah so every process is going to be different so it's good to know what their guidelines are before so you know it is going to be a little bit of work up front to read that and find out you know what their process is mm -hmm. um, because I've seen it both ways where we can just send it out to the masses and, you know, three or four magazines come back and they want to feature it and it's no problem. They don't have an exclusive right um, infringement problem with it. And then there's some that want to be exclusive. And so if they want to be exclusive, then you'll have to just kind of look at, you know, do you already have a commitment with another magazine? Um, if you do, Obviously, you'll have to tell them that, um, mm -hmm. or maybe you haven't heard back from any of the other magazines that you sent it to, and you've heard back from this one that wants to be exclusive, then you'll just have to see if it's worth it for mm -hmm. you to be exclusive with that magazine, um, depending on their viewership. So, mm -hmm. And then if you have um, several images of that photo shoot, 
then maybe you'll allow them to be exclusive with one particular shot, and then you pitch the other All images right. from that photo shoot to other magazines. All right. Yeah, that, that's an interesting approach that I've done before with other photographers where um, when they did one shoot they also did kind of groupings of photos so there was like maybe like a close-up series that would uh, make a great story by itself and then maybe there was a behind the scenes making off sort of shoots and then something else is that another good inspiration to really maximize your efforts to kind of tell people yeah have different stories in one production basically so you can yeah. pitch okay yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, um, I had another question I got yesterday from another startup who asked me. She was approached by um, a UK magazine and uh, who had picked up her brand, which is not launched yet, but they picked up her um, tagline, which is about um, focusing about petite fashion. And, and they, they told her, okay, we're going to feature you um, if you pay us $250 or something and we have like professional journalists uh, write your story and we're going to feature you. Is that a typical thing or does that smell like kind of, oh, just give us money sort of thing? <laughs> <Is> that, <laughs> does that, <laughs> do you have to look individually or what, what? what's your experience with things like that? Yeah, there is, the, that does happen. That's always going to be part of the process where there's like free press mm -hmm. and paid press. Okay. And okay. so a lot of times if you do reach out to a magazine and they wouldn't necessarily feature you um, on their own, mm -hmm. uh, but they still feel like your company is a good fit for their magazine, then they'll say, here's our advertising rates. Okay. They could okay. do like a sponsored write-up about you. Um, and then you would want to ask for their media kit, which would allow you to see the demographics of their magazine, mm -hmm. their viewership. So then that way you can really gauge, is it worth it for me to pay? And right. I do tell new companies that it might be, um, you might have situations where you do end up paying for mm -hmm. a feature and that's not a bad thing okay. if it's the right fit for you. Okay. Um, so going after press that is positioned in a way where you're having to pay for it necessarily isn't a bad thing because then you're going to be guaranteed that exposure mm -hmm. and it's going to be a guarantee feature the way that you want your company to be featured. Nice. You're going to have control on what's being said and how the format's going to go. Oh, look at that. So as long as their media kit really kind of fits with your demographics mm -hmm. and the price point makes sense for what you're going to get yeah. then maybe you want to start to budget for, for that from time to time that sounds nice and it sounds like it could be a very affordable alternative to just like signing up with an agency where you have this monthly really usually very big price tag right so maybe <laughs> that is a, a cool spice up the, <laughs> the process way of not paying okay. too much but getting some stuff done very right. cool thank you so um, and go ahead one other thing too, just with bloggers, that mm -hmm. kind of goes hand in hand with bloggers as well. Like if you're going after a really large blogger yeah. that has amazing traffic on their side, mm -hmm. most of the time they're going to require payment for a feature. Oh, right. So okay. the higher the traffic of the site, mm -hmm. the more likely you're going to have to pay for a feature. Okay. Okay. That's really good to know. Okay, so let's talk about like what um, at what point a company has to be in to be able to afford you. <laughs> and I know you probably don't want to say any numbers right now because it may change and our video will stay online and whatnot. But like, um, what kind of I don't know? Can you give some pointers where they have to be in their um, startup phase to to be able to afford you and how you can help them? Yeah, definitely. What we look for on our end is a company that is ready to go as far as PR. You know, you want to have your website ready, like what we talked about before. You want to have your images ready. Um, those are primarily the two things that, that we would need to get started, um, is make sure that those are at a professional level. If yeah. not, you know, we do offer services for consulting mm -hmm. to help you grow and get to that level. So if you're if you're at a phase where you're wanting to start a company and you're not quite sure the process of how to do that or if you're hand making your jewelry and you're growing really rapidly and you need to start mass producing, mm -hmm. you know, that's a part of our consulting oh, side nice. of business. So it really depends on where you're at in your process, but we do help 
brands that want to take it to the next level mm -hmm. and they're, they're not quite sure how to do that we'll walk nice. you step by step through that process but once you are ready for PR then we just make sure that you have certain things in order before we can really start pitching you because at the end of the day we want it to be successful for both of us yeah. on both ends and um, really trying to find what your unique approach is going to be so then that way our pitch can be successful at the end of the day okay that sounds awesome so basically people can just approach you and kind of um, you know discuss with you like where they stand and then you see like uh, where how far away they may be from be able to afford you or or if you can help them along get get there faster and kind of prepare so they know okay I can do this and maybe get back to you in half a year or whatever and then I'll be ready or, yeah so yeah or there's there's companies that come to us for like a la carte services too oh, cool. you know like maybe they're at a point where they're just really stuck in this one area and you know they need to build a press kit they need a press release they need help kind of fine-tuning their website mm -hmm. or they need help with the creative process of their photo shoot to really put their um, unique approach um, across in their photography. Yeah. So, like, if there's certain things along the line that come up where they need just strategic help in different areas, like we'll do that too. That's great. Um, so, yeah, it it just depends on what you're needing in that moment. But for PR, once we start working with the company on the PR side, you know, then that's pretty much an ongoing monthly process. Yeah. Of, of really working to pitch to them and really kind of seeing from their side of, of the um, of the business what their goals are like we have some clients that want to work with bloggers but they're not necessarily interested in getting magazine coverage okay. they just want to build traffic to their website and they want to work with bloggers on you know giveaways mm -hmm. and driving traffic but then we have some clients that want to be featured in magazines yeah. or they want to be featured on TV mm -hmm. um, uh, you know different ways of going about TV opportunities or celebrity exposure mm -hmm. so it really just depends on what your goals are and then we kind of fine-tune a proposal based on that mm -hmm. and, and figure out our monthly plan that's really great so um, so I understand that people could also approach you for like let's say an hour consulting it's like okay I need to pick your brain where I stand and what would you do <laughs> and things like right. that right oh, that mm -hmm. sounds amazing sounds like you're a one-stop shop you can help like full scale <laughs> but also like really just help them figure it out and get going awesome thank you so much let's do a quick like quick spotlight on you and your career and whatnot because I always find it inspiring to it uh, to inspire other startups and other women entrepreneurs I find it so cool what you have achieved and accomplished like what are the cool things in the future that we should look out for from you in three years or whatever what are you working on these days uh, a lot of things actually. <laughs> uh, which is exciting though you know the plan really is to grow the business further we're offering a lot more services that we're excited about um, you know, through different things with your website, through different promotional materials mm -hmm. to really help get your name out there to the masses. Our celebrity database is growing rapidly, so okay. we want to be able over the years to really be like a, a resource for celebrities um, to be able to partner with brands. Um, one exciting thing that I'm working on that I'm really excited about is I started a handbag line back in 2008. Uh -huh. And I was still working for um, Fredericks of Hollywood, and then I went over to Fox. And so I was working on the corporate side um, in product development and manufacturing. And so I started this handbag line because I had done handbags at Phoebe, and I thought, oh, it's easy. I know how to do that. But it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> and then having your own line. So I kind of put it on the back burner, uh -huh. and um, I'm excited to – kind of relaunch the line again and expand it into other accessories nice. and what I'm really passionate about is um, bringing awareness for human trafficking oh. um, that's been on my heart mm -hmm. uh, for the last several years and I had an, an incident where I was potentially um, uh, encountered with that and so oh you know it's really wanting to bring awareness toward that and, and really about girl power and standing up for yourself and 
and being okay to be beautiful, you know, like with the human trafficking stuff, it's almost like we're seeing this wave of, um, of a sense where women are afraid to like really dress up and draw attention to themselves because they don't want to be subject to that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, be confident in who you are. Don't let your beauty um, stop because you're in fear. Let's mm -hmm. use that and really kind of um, stand up for what we believe in. So I'm really passionate about bringing this line back and really bringing it back for a purpose to really bring, uh, bring awareness to it. Love so. It what I'm working on that sounds so exciting what website um, will that be on and where can we find you well you can find me at um, Tasha Clemens com that's T O S H A C L E M E N S dot com so that's the PR agency's website mm -hmm. and we don't have a website yet for the accessories because we're still in the beginning phase mm -hmm. so it'd probably be best to look on the Tasha Clemens website right okay. now and then when we get it all up and running we'll announce it on there okay that sounds great is there a way people can sign up for your news or is it best to follow you on Twitter or, or Facebook or do you have a newsletter where would they stay in touch um, well we have all of the news on the website mm -hmm. um, there's a news tab but Facebook is primarily the way that we get out and we connect with um, um, different brands mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. So the Facebook page is uh, facebook.com slash Tasha Cole Clemens. Okay. So people can find us there or if you go to the website, it'll have different tabs at the bottom for our social media mm -hmm. outlets because um, currently we don't have a newsletter as of now. Okay, that's cool. So, but you're probably also looking for women who may like to support your cause and probably, you know, maybe collaborate in some ways or yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So anybody who reads this, <laughs> listens to this and watches. Yeah, like reach out to Tasha. Awesome. Thank you so much. Do you have one last tip for startups um, uh, for their beginning, like something, an inspiration or a resource or something you want to give them for the day? Um, you know, MailChimp is really great. I know a lot of companies already do know about it, yeah. um, but kind of speaking about newsletters, it's a great way to start collecting email addresses mm -hmm. and you know be in contact with your customers on a daily weekly basis mm -hmm. and there's even companies out there where you can buy email lists from mm -hmm. so let's say you're kind of at a point where you know you have your niche of clients but you're having a hard time reaching out to new potential clients you can purchase email lists that are um, kind of dial down into your demographic. So like going back to the yoga wear line, you can actually purchase email addresses that are yoga lovers um, in a certain region and oh, a wow. certain age group. Okay. So um, you can get really specific to buying email lists that cater to your exact demographic. So, you know, to really get a jump start and a boost on getting your name out there, um, that could be a resource that you want to look into as well. Okay. That's really great to know. I guess people just have to be aware of like not spamming those people. And maybe would you separate that out, kind of um, the purchase list? So you send them like a one off email. It's like, hey, you want to sign up for this? So there's this new, right. did you hear about this? And then later, if they sign up, then you take them into your list or something like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. But it sounds like a great resource um, to be able to get specific people on your list because that's one of my things on the list too is like how do I grow my newsletter following. <laughs> great to know. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Tasha. This was amazing and super great resource. I wish you much success and I can't wait to see where you're going. And um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing so much with my readers and with startups and girl power ventures. And yeah, let's do more of that. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank okay. you so much. Having me. It was great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.